practice cases. Okay, now you have a 32-year-old previously health, healthy male who emigrated from India, present with six weeks of fatigue, okay? His vital signs, blood pressure is 130 over 80, uh, pulse is 88, respiratory rate is 22. Okay, that's the thing. Let's, let's, see, let's see the full history. So his full history, he's, he had the six weeks of fatigue, low-grade fever, dry cough, Recently, he noticed increasing cough with yellowish sputum. He says that his ab his appetite is decreased. He had unintentional weight loss. He denies shortness of breath or hemoptysis. He's been smoking one pack per day since 10 years. Denies alcohol. Family history is nothing significant. Rest of the review of system is unremarkable. He's sexually active. Okay, immunization is up to date. Use and uses condom by sexual. So this is the. So how do you approach this case? Like so, patient who presented with six week of fatigue, low grade fever, dry cough, weight loss. The possible diagnosis, especially if he's coming from India, what could be the possible diagnosis? Wait, he recently coming from India or or no? They don't say. They just say immigrant from India. So he has a TB exposure when in India, right? doesn't matter if he's recent or not, it could be latent and now get activated. Okay, so the differential, like when you have a six week cough and sputum, you have, so this is a chronic, we can't suspect this is a bacterial. Most likely it could be a TB, okay, or it could be fungal infection, it could be HIV, it could be cancer, it could be chronic bronchitis, it could be bronchiectasis. Okay, and it could be also due to asthma, GERD, medication, and so, so that's our differential. That's the most important thing is to formulate differential, okay? So he's in the outpatient setting right now. What do you want to do right now? So you do a physical. Oh, yeah, excellent. Let's just do full <laughs> physical. Okay, so he's thin built. Male appears comfortable. Mm, hint is fine, anecteric sclera, moist mucous membrane, no JVT. L lungs distant, hollow, breath sounds, and post tussive rails are heard over the right upper lobe. Wow! So now, what do you think? Upper lobe that that indicate most likely it's a TB. Yeah. The, because it's, it's, it it favors the upper lobe. Decreased breath sounds, dullness to percussion, noted at the base of the right lung. Extremities is fine, no edema, clopping, or anything like that. So let's. So that's the idea for this patient. So let's. Okay. So now let's just put some orders. What do you want to do, or what orders do you want to do? Chest X-ray. Yeah. Let's go through this mnemonic. Remember CBC, uh, LFT, ICU. Okay. So we do CBC, CMP. Uh, let's do cardiac enzymes. Cardiac. Okay, lipid panel. Uh, FOBT is not that necessary. Just x ray, that's an important. Then let's do sputum. Right. Okay. Uh, then do you do EKG? Right, right, right. Uh, blood culture. Why is cardiac enzymes important in this guy? Culture. It's not important, just a routine. It's not like if you don't do it, you're not gonna lose anything. Right. right. Yeah. Mm, okay, let's do. What else? Let's do ESR. That's an important one. Yeah, I think that's that should be fine for now. Okay, let's just. Do... Let's 
So AFP culture fungal gram stain pneumocystis. What else? Do you want to do anything else? No, I think that's good enough. Fungal? Oh, well, no, it doesn't matter. Hmm? No, no. Okay. No. Okay, now let's get the x ray results. That's the most important thing. I mean, you can keep him in the yard like for three hours. That's okay if you want. Maximum three hours. You said you can keep him in the ER max three hours? No, no, in the office. In the office. He's huh. in the office. You can keep him like for maximum three hours. Okay, now the chest x ray shows right apical cavitary lesion with a small pleural effusion. Sputum exam shows AFP positive for rod shaped bacilli. Okay. Mm -hmm. White BC is at 12,000, hemoglobin 13, hematocrit 40%, peripheral smear is normal, normal EKG. So now, whenever you have this thing, what do you want to do? What do you want to do for this patient? Uh, so we give him um, anti-TB medications. The first thing, we admit him, because this is serious. Right now it's a TB, okay. so confirm yeah. TB. Put him with TB, okay? So we send them to inpatient? Yeah, let's just send them. Let's do the admitting orders. What are the admitting orders? You remember? V panic. Vitals? Right. Omoprazole. He doesn't need it right now. Activity. Yeah. Put in bed rest. Panic. Right. N. NPO. Yeah. I input what? output. Pneumatic compression. Yeah. Okay. Now let's do our stuff. Let's do uric acid before we give the TB medications. Liver function test. PT. PTT. INR. Uh, what else? Eye exam. Uh -huh. Eye exam. Ophthalmologic evaluation. Okay. Let's consult the ophthalmology. So what else? So this is before we give the TB. We can't give TB like uh, medications right away. Vitals mm -hmm. you keep it every four hours. They already had it every eight hours. It's okay. Input, output. The uric acid is for which medication? For pyrazinamide. Because okay. hyperuricemia. And ophthalmology is for ethambutol. Okay. Okay, so let's get those. Uric acid is fine, liver function test is fine, PTT is fine. Let's get the ophthalmology. Uh, ophthalmology doesn't, is fine. Okay, so now we can. They don't give me the stuff. Okay, so now let's let's order the medication. What are they? Okay, so Refampin, INH, Ophthalmutol, okay. Parazinamide. What's the other one? The fourth one? Something S. I forget. So INH, Rifampin, yeah. Pyrazinamide, and Rifampitol. That's it. Right. Oh, wasn't there a fourth one? You can give Pyridoxin, which is you give it with the Pyr... No, no. Which one? Those are four. INH, Rifampin, Pyrazinamide, yeah. Rifampin. Hmm? Okay. You give it for six for months, the fan pen six. The huh? Ophthalmology exam, did you call Optical Consult? What is it? For the eye exam, did you call Optical Consult also or no? Yeah, yeah. Optical Consult, yeah. So we keep him in the ward for how long then? We'll just keep him like for a couple of days. We don't keep him like. Okay. And then we just monitor him like every day. Okay. I think this one, Rifampin, this was IV by mistake, so let me just reach in there and put it oral. Yeah, they all go oral, right? Yeah, they all go oral. Okay, in this guy, are, do we need to do, like, um, earlier? Should we have done, like, acid fast bacilli, keep running it, like, three times or something? No. Like, what do you mean? You need to give, like, acid? Because we confirmed with acid fast bacilli, right? 
So yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You repeat it three times. Every time, like when everything negative, then you change location to home. Okay. okay so you, you just repeat it. You can repeat it for three days. Okay. And then every day, like you can do AFP. You can do it like every twenty four hours every day. Okay, so now what else? What do you want to do? Nothing else. No, Did just yeah, just monitor him. Let's do some counseling. Do we do any precautions? Like what? I don't know, he has TB. Don't we need to isolate the guy from other people? We do the public health department. Okay. And we do we do spartan isolation here. Because illegal drug use is the biggest risk factor for TV, so... Yeah, I think that's good for now. Notify a public health department, reassurance. Now, let's just keep checking on him. Let's see. Let's let's change it from NPO. Let's just give him diet, regular diet. Okay. Let's check on him every day. That's. It. Now let's just do interval follow up, not everything. <laughs> so every day you'll do a physical, right? Yeah, yeah, just focus physical. Okay. It's just like a, when patient coming for a follow up visit. Yeah. Okay, let's see, everything seems getting better. Vitals are going down, so let's. No, same thing, let's just see him on the third day. So, uh, SS vessel vessel line, no, SS vessel vessel line, that's the second one. What is that? Oh, okay, that update doesn't even matter. Yeah. And then, let's do another physical, okay. He's, he's so, how getting... long we're keeping him until his. Uh... Until what, what vitals are is stabilized and you have three acid bass bass lie. Okay. okay, so let's keep it fourth day and then I'll discharge him on the fourth day. That's my discharge plan. <coughs> okay, now I think I can discharge him. I'll just let me do something. So I'll go to order LFT every month. And we repeat checks just X ray also in another month. Let's see if they have thirty day. No, they don't have thirty day. Hmm? 
So that's so we do LFT every thirty day. Okay. Hmm? Anything else we do to monitor? Most chest imp most important thing: just do a lever function test every month and uh, chest X-ray every month for TB. Oh. Yeah. And actually, uh, chest X-ray only one month after. You don't need to do it every month. That's mm -hmm. it. Okay. okay, now, when you were putting in the medications, we don't have to put, like, we give it for the next four months, six months, something like that, right? No, no, you don't. There is nothing like that. They don't know. The, it's nothing like that in the CCS. Yeah. Okay, so now for for someone, and uh, so TB is not uncommon in the U.S., can happen. It can happen mostly in malnourished, homeless, and those living in overcrowded situations, immunocompromised, Okay, mm -hmm. those are high prevalent for it. Most common variant is the pulmonary form. Mm. Okay, but people who have impaired cell mediated immunity, they have pulmonary and constitutional symptoms like fatigue, decreased appetite, weight loss, fever, night sweats, cough. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once, even when it happened, the pulmonary, if he doesn't get treated, can spread to other parts. Okay. Okay. So the first thing you work up someone with TB, first thing you do, chest x-ray, shows apical or right middle lobe infiltrate cavitary with or without pleural effusion. And then you do subutum examination for AFP. ESR will be elevated and the AFP will be positive. Okay. Yeah. And your patient usually have positive PPD test. PPD test is not diagnostic in symptomatic patient. Okay, mm -hmm. as indicate active and latent, so it doesn't, but the AFP smear indicate that. And even if the AFP smear is negative, because AFP is only positive in 50% of the cases, you do nucleic acid amplification test of TB. Okay. That's even better. It's 90% All right. uh, sensitive. And then you give him, the first you check for liver function test and eye and uric acid before you order. After you make sure everything is fine, then you do INH, rifampin, pyrazinamide, okay, for two months, followed by four months of INH and rifampin, mm. okay. So what is the main cause of treatment failure in TB? Non-compliance. Excellent, non-compliance. That's why we have to do counseling, education, mm -hmm. reassurance. That's going to be important here. Okay. Okay. And when do you recommend inpatient treatment? Mm -hmm. When do you? Well, you always recommend inpatient treatment. Yeah, until you get a negative bacilli for three days. Okay. 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 And the outpatient management considered if there is no immunocompromised members or children under four years of age at home. That's mm -hmm. when you become outpatient treatment. Okay. okay. So. So all so this is like in a summary. All anti-TB medication causes hepatic failure, hepatic in impairment. Okay, and INH causes neuropathy. That's why we give pyridoxine. Uh -huh. And that's why we monitor liver function test every month. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And the uh -huh. CDC recommend that monthly. Uh -huh. Okay. How about ethambutol causes what problem? What does ethambutol? Eye okay. problem. Huh? Yeah, it causes optic neuritis. Uh -huh. right. Okay, that's why you get the uh, ophthalmology consultation. Sure. How about rifampin? What is the side effect of that? Uh, everything colored. Colored urine. Yeah, con yeah orange colored urine. And pyrazinamide causes hyperuricemia, causes joint pain. Okay. And most often it's asymptomatic. Okay. That's why you order baseline uric acid to see what's going on. Because it can cause uric acid elevated and cause gout, right? So that's an issue. True, true. But, so I hmm? IH can cause both neuropathy and hepatitis, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, what's more common, neuritis or hepatitis? I don't know which one is more common, but I know for sure like it's going to cause both. Right, right. Yeah, but I, I don't know which one is more common. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so b routine follow-up measurement of uric acid is not recommended for this patient. Good. Does. And all of the drugs safe in a pregnancy, except which one? So, uh, I think as the pyrazinamide. 
Yeah, like the pinazinamide, they don't have studies like it's if it's teratogenic or not. But streptomycin is big no no. You don't give it for pregnancy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Wait, that's the one I was thinking of. Streptomycin. I just couldn't come up with the name. But we do give it to everybody, right? And no, 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 no. No, we don't give it to. No longer. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so how about if someone is HIV positive? Uh huh. How do you treat that? Well, you treat them for longer, I think, and you add like steroids with TB. No, it's almost the same. Okay. Yeah. The same amount of period, no adding steroids. Yeah, yeah. You don't. All right. But more, you give them more, more directed observed therapy. Got it. So that's the only thing, the difference. Okay. And all patients should have a baseline CBC, BUN, creatinine, LFT, chest X-ray, and uric acid before you give them. Okay. So you got to order all of these tests before you order the TB uric acid. Wow. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Okay, now you have a 28-year-old, previously healthy Hispanic male, who had a three-day of burning micturation. Blood pressure is 110 over 60, temperature is 103, uh, heart rate is 110. Okay. He's a 28, previously healthy Hispanic male, three-day burning micturation, he also has discomfort and pain in the perineum, lower abdomen, back, with fever, chills, and nausea. He states that he needs to strain to pass urine. He passed moderate amount of urine few days, few hours ago. He denies nocturia or increased frequency. Even though he had not had vomitings, he feels like very nauseous and does not did not eat for the past 24 hours. Okay. Okay. He has no other known medical problems. He has no known drug allergies. He's sexually active with his wife. He does not use contraception. He doesn't have multiple sexual partner, smoking or IV drug abuser. He does not. Believe. So how do you approach this guy with dysuria, perineal discomfort and fever? So what differential do you keep in mind for this young dysuria? Pyrimidus, palonephritis. Yeah, pyridomitis, pyonephritis, urethritis, cystitis, prostatitis, could be any of those, okay? Right. So he's in the office. So let's do, what do you want to do, the first thing? Uh, first thing, you want, oh, he's in the office. Let's do a full call, including rectal and genitalia. Oh. So he's a 28-year-old male with moderate pain and appears all abdomen non-distended, bowel sounds are active, so propubic tenderness is a present, bladder is not distended, digital rectal exam cause exquisitely tender, diffusely enlarged, boggy prostate. Oh. Okay. So you avoid repeating DRE in this patient because this is okay. going to cause problem. External genitalia is normal, no ulceration or discharge. Rest of exam is fine. So now this is what you have exquisitely tender, diffusely enlarged, boggy prostate. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so what make it the most probable diagnosis out of everything that we said? When you have exquisitely oh. tender, diffusely enlarged the prostate. Prostatitis, acute. Excellent, prostate. excellent, good job. Excuse me, prostatitis, okay. So let's go do orders. Let's do CBC, CMP, what else? Um, so the uh, LFTs, UA, urine culture, blood culture. Uh, what else do we need in this guy? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Let's do blood culture, urine, gram stain. 
Okay. Culture right, sensitivity. Right. Okay. So here, your gram stain is important. Okay. So this is prostatitis, like it's something. So I'm gonna send him to the inpatient. Okay. Not with him, and he's having high grade fever. Mm -hmm. Let's do the V panic on him. Uh -huh. Vitals, on prison, we don't need it. Bed rest, panic, diet. Let's give him normal diet and. Input, output, IV access, okay. Oh my fluid. And pneumatic compression. <laughs> they already Okay. Anything else? Um, no, I think we pretty much covered everything. Yeah, let's get the results of the urine analysis. That's the main thing. Wait, do we give him any empiric antibiotics right now? No, let's just get the results of the urine analysis. It doesn't take too long, you know. Oh. So the gram stain shows gram negative bacilli, see? Mm -hmm. So now we can give him antibiotics. What do you want to give him? Um, Yeah, or, or we can give him ampicillin, gentamicin. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's it. Ceftriaxone also is fine, too. Let's give him Tylenol for the fever. Let's so give him Phenergan. He's nauseous, you know. Oh, what happened? I think I ordered. Okay, no problem. Okay, so now what do you want to do? Uh, let's, let's just advance the clock and like, see him in four hours or so. Now let's just do a quick physical on him. We don't repeat drug tests and stuff. Just quick. So we do we admit this patient to regular unit, right? Yeah, regular unit, obviously. Patient is feeling a little bit better and stuff like that. Okay, his fever is getting better. Let's just see him the next day then. There is nothing now that we can do left, right? We manage his symptoms, we order labs, we diagnose him, and we did the treatment. Now, just monitoring and just follow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blood culture showing no growth after 24 hours. Now, let's just say hi again. 
Yeah, he's getting better and stuff like that. So he's up for Brial. Now, now what do you want to do? So, um, now he's up for Brial, we can send him home? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we can just send him home. Okay. But if we assume that he's, he's still like having problems and stuff, we keep him for another day. Okay. Check him again. Now he's feeling better. Okay. So now, if we assume he's feeling better, let's just discontinue IV therapy. Yeah. It's not nauseous. Move this one. What do you want to give him? Uh, his culture results came back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can we give him trimethoprim sulfa? Let's give him Cipro. Okay. Because Cipro. this is for trimethoprim for cystitis most likely. Yeah. This one. Ciprofloxacin. And let's repeat the CBC now. <laughs> That's with any infection you repeat the CBC. Right. Oh, I did a mistake. It's supposed to be oral. That's why I, I <laughs> that's why I can't. Cipro. Okay, yeah. Now there's nothing left to be done. To move IV excess. Let's, move okay. Let's just cancel him now and send him home. Wisconsin him on safe sex too. Anything else? Um, no, that's about it. No, well, yeah. Just discharge them home. Uh, we'll see him like in a week. So now he's arrived to the appointment and urine culture reveal E. coli sensitive to ampicillin, cefazolin, gentamicin, azithromycin, and cipro. Okay, so, so after you get the urine culture, you change it according to the antibiotic results. So if you gave him cipro and he's uh, the E. coli is resistant to cipro and sensitive to cefazolin, then you switch that. Okay. So just get it.
Okay, and you give him antibiotics for how long? Uh, for six, hmm? six, six months. Four weeks. Four weeks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Close enough. Yeah. So now, if uh, if so, so every year, like two million cases of prostatitis are documented in the U.S. Most likely in young and middle-aged male. Okay, the common presentation like this scenario. So, what is most likely organism? <coughs> well, in the older, it's the E. coli, right? So, in general, it's an E. coli. But what if someone is diabetic? Um. Oh. Then I don't know. Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas. How about if someone is younger than 35, having multiple sexual partners? Chlamydia and gonorrhea. Yeah. Okay, and sometimes the organism is sent up to the urethra, preceded by trauma, dehydration, bladder catheterization. Okay, and that's the presentation, like you saw, fever, malaise, irritating symptoms, suprapubic, perineal pain. And their digital rectal exam. Okay. How about if there's an obstructive symptoms due to edematous prostate? So what do you think? Like if there's creatinine is high and stuff, what do you, what do you do? Um, you drain the. I mean, you do catheter, suprapubic catheter or something. Huh? I don't know. Uh, <coughs> oh. No. Oh, I was sneezed, I don't know. Yeah, you do suprapubic drainage and you avoid the bladder catheterization through urethra. Okay. Because this is predisposed to bacteremia. It's like a seeding of the tumor of prostate. Uh, of the, Wait, of so the should, are we supposed to do then a digital rectal on this patient initially? Yeah, you do it only one time. You don't do it. Okay. You don't repeat it. Okay. 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 So, because most of the time it's confused, we treat it as cystitis, but it's totally different. Okay. So, how do you differentiate between both? I'm sorry, say that again? How do you differentiate between cystitis and acute prostatitis? I guess because of the digital rectal exam, the boggy prostatitis, right? Yeah, excellent, yeah. You will have more striking examination, like tender, diffusely enlarged boggy mm -hmm. prostate. That's typical. Yeah. And urine analysis is always the first step, but you add gram stain, that's important. Uh -huh. okay. PSA can be elevated, but it's not diagnostic and doesn't affect the management. Uh -huh. So you can repeat PSA like six to eight weeks, like for this patient, you can. You can repeat PSA, it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. Just. To... How about if the patient has sepsis like picture, like alternate status, hypotension, and cannot tolerate oral antibiotics? Antibiotics due to nausea and vomiting. How do you treat him? IV antibiotics. Yeah, IV antibiotics. And the most common one, you give him IV ampicillin and gentamicin. Okay. Okay. But you gotta do B1 and creatinine before gentamicin. Uh huh. Do you know why? Yeah, because of the nephropathy, right? Yeah, uh, nephrotoxicity. Yeah. yeah. Can cause autotoxicity too. Yeah, so once the patient is febrile, you can give him oral medication. Which one? What oral medication do you give him? So Cipro, as you said, the most common. Yeah, or TMPSMX, still fine. Oh, yeah, right. And you wait for the culture. Once you get the culture available, uh -huh. and then you give them with the, with the best antibiotic that has least side effects for four weeks. Okay. Why do we give him for four weeks antibiotic? Um, because it's difficult to go away this infection. Uh, yeah, because yeah, it's difficult to go away and to prevent sub abscess and septicemia. Uh -huh. gotcha. It's gonna prevent. be harder to treat. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Let me put the IV excess on the laptop. It's not. 
So even in this case, initially we gave IV antibiotics and then switched over to oral. Right? Yeah, because of the nausea and vomiting and stuff. And then you can you can do your analysis next month or so. Mm -hmm. You can under the UA. Okay. Like later, maybe you can put the next one. They like that, like it's a monitoring thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, let's do one more case. Oh, what happened? Rose. How did you like? How was the afternoon session? It was good. I wish I was able to participate more, but it it was good. I, I like yeah. the step. You can you can you. you can participate if you want. Yeah. I know, but um, yeah. sometimes there's just so much distraction going on that yeah, I can't. I understand. Yeah. Take here, but I really like that you do it subject by subject. That's like my favorite thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's hey, okay. Speaking, speaking. Okay, so let's do another case, and then we take a little break. Okay, so now if you if you have a thirty year old previously healthy woman, <coughs> comes with fever, dry cough, pain in the right lower chest. She has fever one hundred, BP one twenty over seventy, pulses ah, ouch. Pulse is 90, yeah, I hit my leg. Uh, respiration is 18, okay, so now the pain is gradual, so chest pain. It's a gradual and in intensity, sharp, non-radiating, and increases with deep breathing. The other symptoms, I have exertional dyspnea, irritability, decreased appetite, fatigue. Okay, she has weight loss, less menstrual period, her menstrual period regular, last menstrual period was two weeks ago, the patient is sexually active with her boyfriend and they use condom, immunization up to date, she doesn't smoke and drink or anything, her mom had a joint pain, okay so this patient is having fever, dry cough, pain in the chest, and weight loss. Okay, so this is interesting. This case is interesting. Let's yeah. see. Uh, she's in the office. Okay. So. Oh, damn. Why? Why did that end the emergency room? Let's see. Oh, okay. Consider it's office. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what do you do first? Office. Well, first, we're doing full physical with this weird presentation. Yeah, let's do full physical. Okay, the patient is anxious, sitting com comfortably in the examination table. Erythematous rash is present over the face, more pronounced in a malar region, okay? Okay. You got the idea. No. Decrease breath yeah. sounds, dullness to percussion. So pleural fusion, metal rash. Yeah. Everything else is fine. Very okay. So what's your clinical impression? Uh, so she has SLE maybe. Oh, yeah, SLE is number one on differentials. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, I'm gonna have to shift her okay. to the inpatient unit. Let's do the. Let's consider. We can't even consider. Let's do the police BS, police oxygen, excess IV fluid, cardiac monitor, BP monitor. Finger stick, glucose.
let's just admit her to the inpatient. Let's do the B V panic vitals. I'm a present a better activity ambulate at all. Diet, you can give her regular diet. Uh -huh. Okay. Ambulate at all diet. Just a second, do you mind if I just pick this card really quick? The ER orders um the inpatient order, input, output, and pneumatic compression. That's a routine use. So this one for everyone. V panic. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Wait, let's see. Can do it. Okay, now let's do the specific ANA, CBC, CMP. Okay, let's do cardiac enzymes. What else? You know this mnemonic CBC, LFT, lipid panel. Okay, FOBT, TSH, still not necessary here. Okay, FOBT, uh, ICU, oh, ICU, that's what I, I love the I, immune. ESR, mm. INA, we ordered yeah. that already. Anna, you can do Anna. Yeah, I, I, I wrote Anna. Mm. What else, what do you want to do? The EKG, let's do EKG. Yeah. ICU, yeah. UA. Sure. Packs, am I lays? Okay. We did chest x ray, right? Chest x ray is very important. Yeah. Uh, packs, packs. Pregnancy test with HCG. She's there. Yeah. Uh, beta HCG, pregnancy, pap smear, PT, PTT, I know. You know, this mnemonics make it very easy. Yeah. Yeah. On the diet, I think, yeah, regular diet, I'm gonna put him. Watch as every four hours and be like that. Well, just normal diet. Okay, now let's get the results. Okay, the hemoglobin is 10, MCV is 86. Chest X ray shows right side the pleural effusion. EKG shows normal sinus rhythm. So, what do you want to do now? ANA is positive titer. So we admit her, right? She's probably having a flare up. Yeah, we admitted her already. Yeah. Uh, get consults. Yeah, let's get consults. Rheumatology. Pulmonology. Yeah. So this. When you have someone with a pleural effusion, you can order chest x-ray, the cupidus position, lateral mm -hmm. Okay, let, let's do anti-double-stranded DNA, DNA, because mm -hmm. ANA is that just only the beginning, and let's order complement, mm -hmm. C3, C4, consult someone. <coughs> lateral decubitus, let's do that. Double stranded. This one is the DNA double stranded. You see here. Complement C3, C4.
consult. Okay, let's get the results of the X-ray to keep this position. So it shows 1.5 cm free-flowing effusion without loculation. That's uh, okay. Now, what do you want to do for pleural effusion? Um, drain it. Let's do thorough synthesis. Let's see what is it. Is it exudative? So this is a procedure. Before any procedure, we do what? NBC. Pepit. We put him on. This one we don't need to put it on NPO. No. no. Hello. All right. I've got to take this call. Okay. So this patient we got there is so now after we ordered Torah synthesis, complement, and the double stranded DNA and the plural fluid analysis, LDH and everything, and then we got the results. And we got the result of pulmonary consult. What do you want to do right now? Monitor. Let's give her the most important treatment. Mm. Check that bond. Huh? Check up on her. Yeah, we checked up, we checked her up, and then we give her prednisone because flare up. Uh, that's true. Let's just do counseling. Let's just keep her maybe for another day and see how she's doing and then we can discharge her. Okay, now everything is going good. So okay. she's she's getting better. So let's just discharge her home. Mm -hmm. Schedule her like in two weeks. Do we send her on any other medications? No, oh, just put his on for now. And then maybe we stop that prednisone, and then we can give her hydroxychloroquine. So this patient, when you identify pleural effusion, the first thing when you do on chest x-ray, what do you do? What's best next step after that? Um, we do thoracosynthesis and pleural fluid analysis. Before that, we do right lateral decubitus x-ray. Ah. That's an important yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if the distance between the inside of the thoracic cavity and the outside is less than 1 cm, the pleural fluid is not clinically significant and would be difficult to tap. But if it's more than 1 cm, 
then you can obtain a sample for diagnosis. So you can't order thorough synthesis if it is less than 1 cm. Okay? So that's why we ordered lateral decubitus cells. So this may cause you to lose the case if you order thorough synthesis before lateral decubitus cells. Okay. So this is a vital thing. Mm -hmm. After that, you do diagnostic thorough synthesis. Okay, if for someone who have more than 3 cm on the cubitus film. Mm -hmm. okay, that's it. But if someone have ob obvious congestive heart failure, right. then you don't need to do that because you know what's the pleural effusion. But only in this sort of scenarios, like rheumatoid arthritis, as these type of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do we do it in here? To see the layering or something? Hmm? Why do we do it? To see the layering of the fluid? To see the light criteria, you know, of the plural LDH more than serum LDH, over serum LDH more than 0.6. No, I, I mean with the decubitus, ulcer, uh, decubitus chest x-ray. What is that showing? The layering of the fluid? It's going to show the distance between the actual lung tissue and the thoracic cavity. So yeah. it shows us the size of the effusion, how big it is. Okay. And anyway, before you order thorough synthesis, you got to order PT, PTT, and platelet count. Why? And creatinine. Yeah, why? Huh? I, why before thorough synthesis? It's a regular procedure. Yeah, because of someone who have PT, PTT twice normal, or platelets less than 50,000, or creatinine mm -hmm. more than 6, they have an increased risk of bleeding. Ah, okay. Okay, so that's why we got to correct the coagulation abnormality before thorough synthesis. Okay. Because they can bleed to death. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and do you know what's light criteria? You know. Sort of. Yeah, the protein in the fluid over the serum, more than mm -hmm. 0.5, and the yeah. LDH in the fluid over the serum, more than 0.6, or the pleural fluid, more than two thirds of upper limit of normal serum LDH. I mean, the pleural fluid, LDH more than 200. That's what it is. Mean. This patient had 240. Yeah. And pH is also important in parapneumonic effusion. What if the pH less than 7.2? What should you do, huh? Huh? I don't know. You gotta do chest tube aspiration to prevent empyema. Okay. What are the complications of pneumothorax? Like, of thoracin, sorry, I gave. The thoracentesis. What are the complications of thoracentesis? Trauma, lung rupture, or yeah, something. Yeah, Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but routine chest X-ray after thoracentesis is not recommended because it's rare. Okay. So what causes transudative pleural effusion? Um, infections and cancers. No, transudative caused by heart failure, nephrotic, dialysis, and cirrhosis. But so infection yeah, then. yeah. Infection and cancer by exudative. Okay. How about pulmonary embolism? What does it call exudative or transudative? I think that's transudative. It can be exudative or transudative. Okay. Okay, so. Because it has both mechanisms. Yeah, it can. If there is so, if there is if there is a necrosis and stuff and severe enough, that can cause exudative. Okay. Okay. How about esophageal perforation, pancreatitis? That would be exudative. Exudative, yeah, same as a cellular and mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the main? How what is the? How do you diagnose lupus pruritus? Lupus pruritus? Yeah. Oh. Clinical, a clinical presentation. That's like this patient presentation clinically, and you can do serologic finding. The treatment only you give him non-steroidal and steroid. That's it. Mm -hmm. You don't give immunosuppressive in, in SLE pleuritis. Okay. Okay, you don't need for that. Yeah, so that's about it. That's for this case. So let's do a rapid revision of what we discussed for today. So this patient who had a SLE pleuritis, who had a malar rash and pleural fusion, first you do x-ray, and then you order lateral decubitus x-ray, and then you do the, the CBS, the, the mnemonic CBC, LFT, I see you packs, and then you admit her, and you do the V panic, mm -hmm. and then you do prednisone, and you order the thoracentesis and pleural fluid analysis. Okay. Yeah.
and then we discussed the case of 28 Hispanic male with acute prostitutes. so the first thing you presented to the office so you send him to the ER you do the police BS mm -hmm. okay and then you do urine culture blood culture and all of these things and then you do CBC LFT ICU packs pneumonic and then you admit him you do the V panic and you give him IV penicillin and ampicillin and gentamicin and then you wait for him. Once he gets better, you discharge him on oral, TMPM, SMX, or Cipro. And you educate and counsel. Okay. okay. And then the f first case was the Indian guy who had a chronic cough for six weeks. That's most likely a TB. He's in the office. So you do CBC, LFT, ICU, PAX, pneumonic, and then you order sputum, blood culture, and infection protocol. And then you do LFT, uric acid, ophthalmologic, and so on. Then you give him INH, pyrazidine, pyridoxin, pyrazinamide, rifampin, etambutol. Then you counsel him, and you're good to go. And that's about it for today. Okay, so let's take a rest, and then we'll... Sure.